Young, Famous, and African was such an interesting show, don't you agree? Tell me about it. <laughs> All right, so as you know, my name is Kenum. Today we have Chris. Chris Buben. <laughs> today, today we have Chris Buben, and he's here. He's a real estate entrepreneur, and he... I'm a lifestyle entrepreneur as well. Right. I sell luxury cars. Sells and all really that expensive stuff. cars like Bugattis <laughs> and crazy stuff, exactly. right? Very expensive cars. So he knows money, right? He he you go to Dubai, you see the money in Dubai, you see all of that. I can speak the real and the fake. So <laughs> <laughs> So let's talk about this show, Young, Famous and African. Mm-hmm. T- tell me some of the, your hang ups. What what did you think about the show when you watched it? <sighs> the show was very it was a good show, but I think for me it was disappointing because I was expecting, based on the name, my I had a certain expectation. Right. I don't know what the expectation was. Is the funny young, thing, famous, I, and well, African? Yeah. Okay, All we yeah. got was the so, African part. Exactly. I didn't get young. No diss to anybody. I didn't get young. I didn't get um famous because I was squinting at a lot of these people. And I'd like to think I know a lot of people. Right. So I was like, who are these people? Well, but, I mean, okay, fair enough. I didn't know any of them apart from Two Face. But yeah. even Two Face, like, I mean, he's still probably making a lot of money, but I don't know that. He, right. I mean, well, the thing about Nigeria is that we don't really have many people that are new to fame. So he's still like a famous And then even artist, like Diamond, you know? I looked him up. And don't know who I he saw is. his IG and he had 14 million followers. So I was like, okay, Apparently he's, he's huge. Famous. Yeah, yeah he's but huge. But I'm like, I don't know who this is. Apparently he's is. huge, but I guess he's from Tanzania or somewhere. He's not Nigerian. Oh, Zimbabwe. No, he's not. No, no, no. Oh, okay. So no. maybe that's why I don't know him. But yeah, I was like, yeah, I don't yeah. know this but guy. But he's is. huge. He was famous. He was yeah. famous. Uh, uh, Two-Face was famous. Is famous. Yeah. Um, And his wife. And then the rest of them, I guess they're actors Question in mark. South Africa. I guess, like, look, we can't expect to know what's happening across all of the African continent. Like, we know what's relevant in our countries, right? Yes, for the most part, yes. I feel like I know a lot of stuff happening in different countries, and that's why I'm like, I don't know who these Oh, you didn't even are. know who they were? Yeah. I just know what's going on in Nigeria. So, I mean, I knew the ones that were Nigerian. I knew all of them. They, were, they are yeah. famous in Nigeria. Um, but I wanted to say the part about them being young <laughs> i think that something that we need to stop doing as africans mm-hmm. is like uh calling anyone that's under 40 young like the youth is technically like people that are like 30 and that's a good point and that's like not that's not young anywhere <laughs> i think okay so when i hear young right i i feel like i'm looking to see university students maybe or even high school students even 15 year olds young is yeah. young is 15 i'm expecting that i'm hoping that oh we're gonna see i don't know who is rich and famous that has a chat like okay let's say like pdd for example right. i'm looking forward to see like his kids doing yeah. something like that's the vibe i was hoping for and if you say young you're you're not going to have anyone over 25 exactly you know in that list and one thing i'll say is a reason is because in my view this is my perspective i think that because there's so many gatekeepers in nigeria Mm -hmm. and we have seniority and age is such an important thing that they hold on to like the power Mm -hmm. and anyone that doesn't have the power typically the younger generation or one generation below them are still waiting to get access to that power exactly so they're seen as young yeah but at the end of the day they're getting older like these people because are it like, takes a while for them to get your wealth and so, so I once guess they finally get to those positions they still want to claim that they're young yeah and still but like these guys are like almost 40 i'm like this is a whole i'm like if my nephew is calling me uncle i'm like uh-uh you're not a young man <laughs> if you have if you have a 15 year old year old child or 13 year old right? child that child is the young one that's with that's, a whole apartment right. mm-hmm, but there's another thing you? also there's a lack of interest in young people in nigeria like Mm -hmm. and it's not even like it's it's like the gatekeepers of media yeah have decided that young people don't deserve to get a light shone on them yeah so they they ignore them because there's no respect for younger people Mm -hmm. so i feel like that's another reason why they're being ignored but i if the show focused on real young people, it mm. would have been so much more successful. Exactly. And we know there's people out there. Yeah. So I'm just like, so what's going on? Why are we seeing a lot of uncles and aunties? Or at least they're <laughs> on the verge of being there, you know? I'm like, what the yeah. hell? Yeah. Yeah. So that young part was was a hang up. Um, so who are your favorites on the show? Kenya was my favorite. And she was definitely my favorite. And I see, this is what pissed me off, right? I spotted it from like the within the first 30 minutes. I was like, that's my girl. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, because we watched it in a group um at a party and we literally binge watched 
all the episodes. Everything. Then at the end of the season, people started claiming onto Candy. I was like, no, 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 no. You don't get her. She's my. That's my girl. <laughs> right, right. I'm like, please. She's, matter of fact, I I only knew her because there's this viral video. I'm sure you've seen it where she talks about money. I, I guess she's attracted to money, or money attracts her, or something like that. No. No, I just think money recognizes me. Money is comfortable around me. Money likes me. So money feels when it needs someone to talk to, it'll choose me in the crowd and it'll come and sit next to me. Whether it comes in a form of whatever, but it will choose me. One thing I liked about that video was the way she owned the fact that she liked money. Because I feel like a lot of people feel like it's a vain thing to like like money right. and to be open about it. Mm -hmm. So when the show started and I saw her, I was like, oh, I definitely want to watch this. <laughs> and sure enough, she was my kind of person. So for me, I don't know. For me, I don't necessarily like that kind of attitude because I feel as though as black people, yeah. we're too over obsessed with money. Yeah. And it's actually what keeps us poor True. on the continent. That's how like people that's how like when you think about slavery, when you think about colonialism, that's how we were able to be robbed because we have these leaders that are obsessed with yeah. having all this money and they look at the money like money's everything. They've never <laughs> had it, so I feel like they want to prove a point that they're somebody when they finally right. do. But that's the problem. Like we, we people worship money in Africa and that's yeah. why Africa is behind because it's not about money is a tool. Mm hmm Money gets you to where you're trying to... Money gets you what, what we have here in Washington, D.C. Yeah. Right? But people think, oh, money is the goal. You get the money, then you hoard it. Exactly. What's the point of that? No. And you have these stupid cars that stay in your garage. <laughs> I, know, I know you sell cars. You sell cars to all these people. <laughs> right, right. But hey, like, I just think that that level of sup superficiality... Yeah. I find it really cringe. I find it even more cringe when the basic necessities in your country are not provided for. I know South Africa has things yeah. running smoothly, even though like things are arguable. It's and not some, always the best, but it's not somewhere. the best. But at the end of the day, like I, I, for me, I just get so irritated when I see Nigerians specifically just obsessing and glorifying and worshiping money. Yeah. And then you look at, the lack of infrastructure you see the suffering you see like all this and they have the potential which is the saddest part do you know like i was just watching a video about how like saudi arabia how saudi arabia basically controls the world through oil yeah and because of oil because the u.s dollar went off of the gold standard in 1971 mm -hmm. then went into the oil standard so it's like because saudi arabia agreed to make sure all oil purchases were in dollars yeah so saudi arabia has the power right and it's like oil countries have the most power exactly nigeria has the potential to have the most power but people are just so stupid and they're like oh look money oh right, right. oh <laughs> cars oh and like they don't focus on the things that could actually make us powerful we could actually be a very powerful country yeah if we applied ourselves but people are too busy being stupid and those who are making and benefiting keep it for themselves so finally and hoard it like, in houses at like when people give you money in and there's Europe. mold at, no, no even in nigeria like yeah. in nigeria, they'll hoard it in their house there's like mold in the money so if someone true, gives you money true. that's there's mold in it that's a problem oh <laughs> they're getting it from you know the basement <laughs> but we digress i what what i do enjoy about this show is that it doesn't um it doesn't glorify stolen money it glorifies people that have <laughs> earned their money. How do we know it's not stolen, though? <laughs> these are musicians. These are entertainers. <laughs> well, you're right. right? You're right. So you're right. we know at least, like, these guys, I don't know if what percent might be stolen. Who knows? But at least they have a legitimate business and they've proven through crafts, mm -hmm. craftsmanship, you know, that there's there can be money in Africa. It's funny you bring up money because money is not on the name like nothing rich or anything of the sort because i feel like Young i was famous and african yeah but the whole show was about them in private jets but that's the and, point i'm coming flashy to flashy and okay. so i'm like so why did they feel like the need to make it seem that way if right. it had nothing to do with riches like i'm sure there's a lot of entertaining people they could have put that maybe ne right. don't necessarily come from a wealthy background right but they would have been able to give the show what famous, it famous right you know? yeah but here's the thing i think that because back to my point about Africans being obsessed with money, yeah, you won't get people to watch if they're not showing you the glitz and glam. True, people are like you know obsessed with that. But w what I will say is that I wasn't impressed. I wasn't impressed by the money shown on the show. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that they honestly, weren't showing anything. And like I was surprised when some people were like, like the ball that they had. I'm like, what? That was look. I'm not <laughs> trying to that? brag, that but. A I've uh, had a better birthday party. And I'm thinking it was, about this is South Africa. Like, right? if it was Lagos, I can believe why the room is so tiny and squashed <laughs> in a corner and it's a luxury room. But this is South Africa. You guys have the best infrastructure. You have, like, 
things are comparable to anywhere in the world. Right. So they could have picked a real ballroom and like done some. I guess they had a budget and they couldn't <laughs> invite too many extras they had to stick to it. on the set. And I think somebody actually pointed that out right. that they expected more. So I think it's not just us saying this, you know. I think it's season one. The budget is limited. I what annoyed me about it was like every scene was about them. They yeah. didn't try and get a little bit of extras or anything, and it was just so fake because like another thing I had a, a hang up on. Mm. It was clear that like Anne or Annie, Annie and and Swanky Jerry came on the show. Just they came to South Africa just to be on the show. Right. Like if at least if they pretended, I wish they pretended like they lived there or they have a house there. Yeah. Or they have something going on there that they're there for. No, you just came and you didn't even try to. Literally. So it's like, what? Why? Why are you here? And then from the they met in the first episode, and by the end of the episode, they're calling her friends and and they're having a wedding and these are all the only people you invite to your wedding. Right. Like, give us some realism. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know if they're gonna bring people from other places then you might as well bring people worth the trouble you know what i mean and also i'm like why are they even like out there renting places because i started i listened to i can't remember if it was a twitter you know like twitter does like live shows i can't remember where it was but i did hear annie mention that she had other things she was doing but apparently on the just, show yeah yeah, yeah. she's apparently she came to south africa to do other business ventures but it's the producers that edited it the way they did and that's why it portrayed her that way well that's what she's saying it's just it's literally just one line yeah in a confession she's saying oh i'm here in south africa to sign a contract like something give us something like a reason that you're here because we see you arriving mm -hmm. in south africa we know that you live in nigeria mm -hmm. give us a reason for your purpose in being there for like indefinitely yeah and the, to the fact that to the point that you're having a wedding your mom is not at your wedding your dad's not at your wedding you're you're valving your but you these random people that you met right a few weeks Two ago, ago. <laughs> and now they're crying at your wedding and i'm supposed to believe these tears are real right <laughs> that they care like what is this and it you goes know? back to like the whole money situation again it's like people would cozy up to you if they think that you're somebody who has money and they try right. to be your friend and they surround themselves with you and it's unfortunately but that's the africa we live in so right. i wish i really wish that they could have actually inc even if it meant flying back to nigeria to actually do the wedding and then right. cameras could come there nigeria is a beautiful place they could have done a lot of scenes there as well and then it will actually make it african because the name is african mm. it's not south african and somehow yeah. they've only focused on south africa and maybe i don't know where well as a filmmaker from, like, you know, part of it is the production that they wanted to maintain and probably the budget like you said that budget too, exactly production budget and things like I, sound I, I, design. I'm not being able to use fake private jets. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can use fake, fake private jets. There's so many. Well, in no, they could use it, but I was wondering why they were showing a private jet at the start being packed on the driveway. Don't you remember the scene? There was a PJ there, and wasn't I, was it a scene or was it just a was it just the marketing? Diamond came out of the PJ. Okay, well the day he came, he flew in. Yeah. I don't know if he really used it, but I'm like he probably did. I don't think these people are not poor. Like it's not that much money to get a private right. jet. For a famous musician, it's not, you know, it's not, it's not like anything crazy. If he, it depends where he's flying from. I know, like, if it's a domestic flight, they could have at least shown them in there. I don't know. It was just it's suspicious a, a, to me. I don't know. <laughs> well, I'll say in Nigeria, a domestic flight, yeah, is like ten thousand dollars. Yeah, that's in Nigeria, not bad. but like an international flight. Let's say from like Nigeria to the UK is like mm. around a hundred to seventy thousand yeah. dollars. But also, let's acknowledge that this is a Netflix show. There's a budget. So a situation like this, Netflix would be copying. They pay for everything. Deal? They pay for everything. Oh, so they, they pay for like, everything. You probably spend that money, y'all gonna see it. <laughs> there's a budget, like even probably even the clothes, the clothes that they're wearing. There's a budget, not all the time, but like I think I would say that looking at the clothes that they picked out, that um, Swanky Jerry picked out. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a budget to support that because like. So what happened? Why wouldn't there with, be? What, what happened with the budget? Because Kanye's week at some point was falling off. I was like, "Where's hair and makeup?" Oh, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> "Well, they were in a safari. Maybe the hair and makeup team didn't make it on the train." True budget. You was know, short. <laughs> <laughs> budget was short. They had to buy Suya. <laughs> right, right. Um, yeah, her makeup was falling. I was like, "Is, there, is anyone gonna?" But I thought it looked a little cute. I thought it looked like pick and drop. <laughs> Funny enough, I messaged my friend and I was like, "Girl, thank God she had good edges because otherwise that would be terrible." Oh my God, you know, because I was like, "Yo, oh, yeah." I thought it was the style, and I was like, "No, no, no." Her mm -hmm. wig is falling that bitch back. Was sliding off. <laughs> <laughs> it was coming right off. Oh my yeah. God. So, yeah. So you were talking about before how 
you wish that they had other people on the show tell me uh, tell me more right okay, right so. i was teasing you okay right. so i literally sat down and i was thinking to myself like you know it'd be interesting to find out everyone's take and if anyone can comment you know like in the comment section and tell us what they think your cast members they would have liked to see please let us know but the person i was thinking of i think i know who you're gonna say oh, who do you think i was gonna Talk say talking back no, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was one of them. She yeah, was, I was surprised she wasn't on the show. Actually, she was. She was my number one. Right. And then I was talking to someone else, and the person mentioned this person. I'm like, you know what? We all laugh, no matter how much. I I don't want to say we hate the person because I don't hate this person, but I feel like a lot of people Ooh. despise the person. Who's this person? Bob. Oh, Bob Risky. Yeah. I love Bob Risky. He would have been good oh on the my show. God. He would have brought the drama. Oh my god. He would have turned it. He would have Oh my god. All that he's, that's, that's right? amazing casting. Right? Imagine wow. Bob on there. He's already wow. too much on IG. <laughs> right. He's already too much on IG. No, and we season love him two. For it. Yeah. Season two. Bob do you know like your audience is going to increase? Exactly. By like a million fold. He has a Bob million Risky. of followers. And right. I feel like he's already doing what we want him to do. Right. And like he's going to bring it. I know that he's going to bring the fashion. Ooh. He's going to bring the makeup. He's going to bring the dollars, the, the jewelry, hey. the gold. You know, whatever it is that he Making brings, he's going to bring my it. my hair every <laughs> week. How many of you can afford that? Right. He's, <laughs> he's going to reach in the private. He's going to do oh, all the stuff that we want to see. Bobby. Then, yeah. You know what? I, I see what you mean. Like the show should really have been young african and famous yeah and he's young like get people that are hot right now yeah to do and i know who d um the person that did this show was uh the producer was the girl what's her name she's a good she works she, she works at, For at forbes africa Ooh. so i think she might have i can't remember her name something price or i can't remember i'll it's put her coming. i'll put a picture yeah. but i feel like she might have been trying to be elitist yeah in her selections well, what good did that bring? Because obviously this didn't work out. So. Because I feel as though, well, hey, we have uh, the Real Housewives of Lagos for, for you know, but I, I, why did they put Bob <laughs> They need to put Bob Risky in one of these shows. Even that Real Housewives, he needs to be on there. Who, At Bob the, Risky? Yeah. But he's not a housewife. Well, <laughs> not all housewives are housewives. Some of them are divorced. Some have never been married. Some right. are cuts. I mean, look, I mean, not to be insulting to anyone. Look at what's her name? Marlo. Um, is it Marlo Hampton from Atlanta? So I don't watch any as far as I show. know, she's never been married. She's allegedly. Yeah, but at least like you need most of them need to be married for a housewife show. Like, it, like think about it. Like most of no, them no, are typically no. either married or divorced or divorced. But like typically there's like at or least engaged. three couples that are married or engaged. Right? Yeah. It's the housewives. It's like the real housewives. Maybe he would. I keep saying here, so I hope this doesn't offend anyone. She? By the way, she, maybe Bob will bring his or her daddy, and then people can be like, okay, you know, I don't know, but I just you know what we need the most. I think for Bob Risky, we need a whole <laughs> different show. Exactly, and it should be called Bobby's Life. Right, Bobby, Bobby, if you're watching this, let's make this. We're waiting for you, Bobby. Let's make this. No, for real. And then we're we'll waiting. put we'll put we'll put his his arch nemesis. <gasps> James, James, you know he they can't stand each other Brown. right now. Yeah, I love James. Someone in the UK getting some sort of a degree. <sighs> I love James. Come I love both of them. People, huh? <laughs> I said he will come back and school people. I really feel as though like his accent is improving. <laughs> I feel like Bobrisky might be jealous about that accent. Though. It actually has improved. It's like, okay, okay, James. I, I've been listening, you know, they're speaking. always cat fighting and I'm always listening. I'm like, ha, this one I picked up new. Um, what do you call it? I don't understand because like <laughs> Bobrisky every day he has to say something like right? to, to, to throw shade at. Right. And, and then James. he can give us that killer dance too. So he'll be a perfect cast member for the oh show. Oh my God. I think the two of them, but James has his, he was on an HBO show, which I actually shot part of it. Oh really? Yeah. He should, he did, uh, what's it called again? I can't remember. <laughs> I can't oh. remember the show, but it was HBO. Um, but I feel as though Bob Risky and him in the same show. Yeah. The drama. So dope. Matter of fact, just the two of them, they can carry the whole show. <laughs> yeah. Just, <laughs> just like, you call it drags, <laughs> drags of, of Nigeria. Oh god, that would be controversial as hell. Why? And we'll leave for it because it's drag. It's like you're admitting, you're acknowledging, and you know how Nigeria is cross like dresser. Okay, do they like to call it cross oh, no, dresser. No, no. However cross, you want to call it, cross dresser. <laughs> people, I, I don't think anybody cares at this point because, like, look at how big they are now. No one like. True. They're huge. They're the biggest. Like, they're the True. biggest celebrity. They're bigger than all these people that they brought. For and I think it's because you know? there are also people who are, I guess, by nature funny. So yeah. people can laugh at whatever is when happening. When I say they're bigger, it's not about, oh, they have these many followers. I'm talking about their engagement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
their engagement on social media is crazy. It's really up there, like with some of the most popular. Uh, popular. Oh, yeah. what, what am I saying? They're hot. Popular like, US the, stars. And that's one thing that I, uh, I don't like about the elitis- elitism, where you have like these gatekeepers like yeah. deciding what because you're not actually picking what's hot. You're picking people that what are obsolete. Think, yeah. What you think should be hot. Or maybe you're trying but, to bring them back for all we know. Right. But like. If you are really trying to craft this show, mm-hmm. you pick people who are hot right now. And Bob is. Bob Brisky is like everything. That's young, famous African. Yeah. But also, there might have been, there might have been the whole sort of like um, homophobic, uh, transphobic Where? situation. Because as far as Bob I Risky. know, South Africa is what do you say? With Africa, the, the people that are watching, it's not just South Africa. Okay, yeah, the people who are, I mean, like you said, do they really care though? So here's the thing, right? I don't know. Do we should, do we do we say this? Like, <laughs> so like with um, I was saying that I wish that Swanky Jerry was more. Oh yeah. Open mm-hmm. on the show. I'm like, hey, no, nobody knows. We can't confirm it, but anything. But I think like we're here in Washington, in DC, where people are free to be themselves. Who you want to be? You call spade a spade. Like we see, <laughs> we if know it what sounds we see. Sounds like a duck. It's looks like a duck. <laughs> quacks like a duck. It's you know what it is. And there's nothing like look. <laughs> and one thing that I find annoying in Nigeria is that they always suppress people so much that not only are they not f- free and comfortable. That's yeah. how you encourage people to get into these uh, marriages. Exactly. To marry a woman when you know, like, bro, like. Like what? No, you was you was busting it last week on the, on the <laughs> <laughs> in the club. <laughs> I saw you train that thing. <laughs> like, girl, what you married? <laughs> right. Like I've seen that happen. Yeah, no, I see it all the time. <laughs> like literally. And it's like that's what happens. And then people like it's so crazy to me, like when people are so obviously gay and like people are like like really they're like, like really no bitch? way <laughs> how because like the gaydar is so bad because you suppress it so much mm-hmm. the gaydar is just so bad in, the, in nigeria it's crazy yeah mine is mine is 100 i will see you no, you know right I'll be like mm. and then okay but the thing is like there's so many popular youtubers that are lesbians yeah and they're out on youtube just being themselves like making out doing all this crazy stuff yeah and i'm like how come they can get away with it but the men can't yeah. get away with it and and my thing with that is it's like it's a double standard right For sure which i don't mind because i've always voiced this i feel like there's a lot of double standards out there so let women have this one i'm cool with it yeah it's, it's, it's not affecting my business in any way <laughs> yeah but the only reason why women are allowed to do that is because it's like at the end of the day it's about the patriarchal gaze and what uh, patriarchy wants and i think and they america love- has made it to be a cute thing I like think, no i think men it. no i just think men enjoy the idea of having two women so watching two women make out on youtube yeah is acceptable even though like when they walk down the street they might get some you know like insults but look. it's not going to be they're not going to chase them and beat them and potentially True. kill them as they do men. to gay men but it could also be because they're women and they're, they're like, not going to chase them probably not defensive people kind of a thing i don't know what do you mean women won't well you know like how they're like first of all men shouldn't hate women could it be that that's just what they're applying to the situation do you think an african man applies that rule <laughs> actually any... you're right they'd be smacking the shit <laughs> <laughs> what? That, that's, that's another conversation true true, true. Right? i don't think that's the standard i just think that they like the idea of watching two women together and so that's why it's more acceptable yeah and also they don't it's like there's there are still microaggressions there's still areas where they're like oh this is still a joke Mm -hmm. it's like funny it's a joke which is also disrespectful at the same time yeah because it's like (laughs) what you're going through is not real right exactly it's it's a joke but with men it's like oh no this is so offensive i am extremely offended by that and to the point that where people like bob risky i don't know if he's open and out now but there's a, a good period of time where he was claiming that he's he doesn't support homosexuality. It's terrible. Really? And I'm just like, this is like th- this is a problem. By. In the media, they make people spew these lies right. and sell their souls. So like they can't even be out and open. You just reminded me. I keep forgetting how to pronounce his name. Who? But I Bobby. think it is Den Renly or something like that. Den Renly? There you go. The two one. of them. Well, don't, oh, no, hey, let's not. Let's, stay, we're getting into territory <laughs> of people that I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's slow it down. Okay. Let's slow it down. But okay. we can talk about Den Renly. Okay, what about yeah. him? Uh, no, I was just going to say, um, like we said, if it sounds like a qua- like a dog, if it looks like a dog, quacks like a dog, probably is a dog, right? So, 
my thing is why did he put out a post a few days ago talking about he slept with some girl called a woman called goldie who i remember when she died she went to like the uh to the grammys one year like yeah. a, a while ago and she came back and she had like a blood clot or something and she died and i'm like of course you're gonna pick the person who cannot defend themselves you right. know like what the hell like even if it's true why did you have to say it right. so it's just things like that that annoy me i'm like just own your shit oh if you don't want to own it fine but don't lie and that's my thing you yeah. forget about even the fact that like the fact that it's obviously a lie but the f- like you as a man claiming that you had like y- that you slept with a woman like somebody's <laughs> wife by the way that's like disrespectful to her yeah you know and you're using it for clout and we know it's not true or trying to trying to make us believe something but it could be true but we know that you're i mean it could be true yeah quacks like a duck let's say let's put it that way yeah exactly wow like <laughs> yeah i mean it's interesting um but i the thing is like i'm not attacking people yeah for protecting themselves oh no you gotta do what you gotta do to survive especially when you like 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 when you if you live in nigeria Mm -hmm. and the hatred like the actually there's there is a an agreement in society not the younger people but like people that are let's say over the age of 30 Mm -hmm. there's a general consensus that this is you're gonna go to hell this is wrong it's unacceptable and it's not 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 even like the repulsion is extreme it's extreme yeah it's it's quite extreme you know to the point where i remember like when they first passed the law in 2014 i was talking to a good friend of mine i was like oh my god can you believe um that they and we this is someone that was living in the uk Mm -hmm. hasn't even like lived in the uk most of her life but she's like nigerian right yeah i was like can you believe they passed this law and like um that puts gays in jail for 14 years and all of this stuff and she was like yes yes it's good <laughs> you should kill them yes <laughs> useless shouting like that like and really? i was i was shocked i could not believe it because i've never like this is someone that you think <laughs> is exposed like, right you know you think like wow this is someone that's like culture they've schooled in england you know and this is i i was i I was shocked i i was like wow it's actually sad and my biggest thing is mind your business right or if it's not affecting you like what good is it like i'm the kind of person for example i'm on here i'm voicing my opinion yeah i know that everybody has the right to voice their opinion but i'm like if it's going to be to the detriment of someone else then at least be a bit more considerate about how you're making that person feel right right so unless it's something that they're already doing and then you're just pointing out what they're already doing i get that but to have like, i don't understand the hate either i really don't this is 2022 and i'm right. still baffled when i meet people well, who are i do understand well you have to look at the history i mean yeah i could go on and break it down for you guys but it's it's something that was inherited by the british they they impose this that's why it's like funny to me because it's not mm-hmm. even part of like nigerian culture yeah it's another thing we got from our colonial masters and they spread this around all the the colonies these ideas of like actively going against homosexuality Mm -hmm. and specifically male homosexuality never really female homosexuality and that's what i'm saying we may get the past but not necessarily either uh you're still you know women are still going to be told that they're going to hell and oh yeah stuff right uh but so yeah it's just crazy to me how and i wonder if society is ever going to overcome that you know because at the end of the day like if you suppress people you're going to somebody's you're going to end up marrying a gay man you're going to know someone that marries a gay man and then well, what what isn't and that so too many so that's why i don't understand <laughs> when people complain about oh they found out that their husband's gay like why are you upset when you yeah. society suppresses that first and of all i know you knew this or at least you because some that's people the don't know thing. no they really don't know they okay. don't know because they're not exposed to it so they don't even True. know how to spot spot it when they see it yeah i guess nigeria especially because like out here i don't know again i have a good gay there like i will clock shit oh for sure i see those eyes they're moving they're wondering you know but that's me so i i kind of get that actually i can't even like myself in that position in the black community in america there's a lot of homophobia too and it's a lot it is it really is the black thing at this point you know and i think i think this might just be one of those things where men have gone through a lot and all the testosterone and all the beliefs and i don't know like we're also very i want to say religious people by nature because that's Black what people? We, yeah that's i feel like that's what we've been brought up in even those who change later but they've all had some sort of I religious think, aspect and so, i think it becomes is it comes from the fact that africans have always been spiritual exactly like as much as the west had their technological advancements we had our spiritual advancements exactly 
in, so in Africa. So out here, you would find a lot of people who don't really care because it's not really going against any, like, I guess, religion I mean, that they might be following. For or sure. Whatever. And this is Washington, Washington D.C. Like, everywhere you turn, there's a there's a, a right. gay flag, a pride flag, Sign. rainbow flag, sorry. And then, or Black Lives Matter. It's all over this place. Like, Somebody's, you're not going to... Yeah. You're not going to come here with some nonsense, Mm-mm. you know? Even when I was in Toronto, like, every corner, oh, yeah, for even sure, the Toronto. banks, I was T-Dot. like... I was like, okay, I can get used to this. Like, that's <laughs> nice to see because right. I was actually shocked, you know. Right. So, I've only ever lived in liberal cities. Right. So, I can't speak. Like, if you're in somewhere like Texas, mm-hmm. you know, a state like Texas or, you know, a, somewhere in middle of I, I, I specifically Arkansas, pick... Arkansas, Alabama. I, I pick places that are not racist, <laughs> <laughs> that are on the coast. Right. Coastal areas type of areas next you to know. the water quick to get in and out <laughs> but like you just get more liberal people and yeah. you don't have to deal with like as much i won't say like i don't yeah you don't get extreme racism you just get microaggressions yeah you know undertones exactly which is still offensive it is but at least like, like you're not really being that, chased am I tripping? you're not being chased or but hey i'm not a man i don't have to deal with like getting yeah. suffered by the police or any of that stuff that still happens everywhere that's a whole conversation on its own. <laughs> <laughs> How did we start talking about young African and rich? Oh, yeah, yeah, we're talking I, about I know. all this stuff. Like, I think so we were talking about Swanky. Right. I Okay, so here's my thing with Swanky, right? I don't know him personally. Yeah, I don't know anyone who knows him personally. That's why I'm freely... I do know someone that knows him. Actually, you know someone that knows him personally, oh, but oh, we're all oh, good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, I do. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. I, we know the same person. Yeah, okay, yeah, right. That knows him personally. Yeah, but, but, okay. but the point of my, my, my... I guess the point of my point is none of these people or nothing that i know has confirmed anything about who he is like in his personal life so i guess what i want to say is if it cracks like a duck yep and also i feel like if he was allowed to be himself right i personally feel like he would have brought a lot more to the show and also it's a perspective that not a lot of people have voiced so again you're setting the trend which is why i feel like what really needs to get on this show and and so i just feel like Someone like Swanky needs to go on YouTube. Go check out what's her name? Amara the lesbian. This is a lesbian living in Nigeria, what's and she's out here making out her girlfriend, do, being crazy. There are a few right. of them, just being herself, being free, and nobody is lynching her. Nobody is chasing her down. No one's killing her. She's living her life. And I know there's a double standard with men, mm-hmm. but if Bob Risky can dress like a woman, and pretty much, I think he's pretty much out. I mean, even if he wasn't, the whole world knows what it is. So, right. so I just feel like, you know, I feel like. Swanky, and with Swanky's Swanky fashion, Jerry, like, fashion, like, like, he just has so much to give us. And uh, I feel like Nigerian society is holding him back because the rest of Africa, I won't, not, I won't say all of Africa. And he's good looking, you know. Very good looking. Uh, I think a lot of Africa will accept him, especially South Africa. They will. They'll embrace. And it's and legal in it's, South it's Africa. It's not illegal so. to be out and gay in Nigeria. It's illegal to be caught in the act. Well, okay. Nobody's catching him then. Right. Period. <laughs> That's another thing that people don't know. That they think it's illegal to be gay. It's not legal to it's be. It's not. As long it's as they it, don't see you doing if, something. Yeah. It, it's illegal to be caught in yeah. the act, which is like a ridiculous law that needs to be removed. So is he coming out there? <laughs> I don't know. We're just trying to tell him that, baby girl, we, wanted, we want we you, see you to you let flourish. your hair down and yeah. be you and be free and be like world famous prosper you know i i know for a fact take it that to hollywood he has the sass in him he, that's what i'm saying he's gonna bring it like yeah. come season two if there's yeah. a season two if he be, if he becomes himself if he just accepts who he is as a person yeah i think he's accepted i don't think that's the issue i think the issue is people uh exposing it to the world and yeah. his family might not be okay with it and all these other things you know but i guess he has to make the decision is it going to affect his career? I don't. I think it's going to make his I career like better. Part if he's of accepting open. who you are is being open about it. No, don't you think? Being open about like the subject matter. If you accept right. that this is who you are. Okay, so so you're out, right? Yeah. So how is it in Cameroon? Honestly, I don't know. But you see, that's the thing with me. I don't pay nobody any attention. Like, but you I don't just... live in Cameroon, though. Okay, I don't leave there as well, but I'm there for long periods. My family is still there. When I say my family, my that's my parents, right? Right. So I feel like, and I know a lot of people out there, and really, I don't care what anybody has to say, but that's me. I'm stubborn. I will do me. You're not paying my bills. You're not in and my And there's bedroom. also a, like, there's a wealth thing, gap, or like when you have money, then nobody's going to... Okay, so I've heard that a lot too, and that's probably true. Anything. It's very true in Nigeria, at least. I can... <laughs> 
the thing is i haven't gotten in a situation where i would be like oh if i wasn't who i am then maybe something would happen that's right. not me i don't really like i'm very social but i'm also very like introverted right like if i don't know people i just keep to myself or i stick to the people i know but then you know i might stroll like across the room and be like oh i want to get to know this person but mm-hmm. i'm not really out there like that like right. you don't see me running around town talking to every you know so i don't know i don't think people know me does that right. make sense right like the cops wouldn't see me and be like oh we know this guy he has money he, like they might look at you and be like okay you look like you're somebody right but but that's what i mean like it's the looking as far as like again it I goes back know. to what we talked about earlier how about like africans are obsessed with money right you take a hundred dollar bill or forget that take 1000 naira that's even a lot right well not today not these days though <laughs> right right you take 1000 naira you say hey here you go i don't care I, okay so i get what you're saying that no one's gonna stop him no one's gonna do sometimes when i step out especially when i'm going somewhere that i know i've been networking with people that i need to do business with i always make sure i look the part right and for me looking the part might be wearing certain things that if you see you're like oh this person definitely is so, coming from that background i guess so my question for you is that. Has it affected you getting business being if like being no. open and out and gay in, in Cameroon? I do, but that's the thing. Are my you, client, you're not my out, clients out, are actually not even from Cameroon. Let's oh, start with right, that. Right, right, right. But do they, when they see you, do they know that you're gay, or do you just don't have the conversation? You know what? I guess people would have to tell me like this is what they think for me to know. I honestly, do. but you okay. see, that's but you're not you're thing. not out here saying oh my boyfriend blah 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 well, blah because I don't have any right. But if you did, <laughs> would, if, if you had a husband, would you be like? Oh, my husband. Oh, y'all blah, gonna blah, know blah. about it. Oh, okay. Look, I always, I, I always <laughs> tease on IG, right? Those those who follow me, I always tease on. I've literally picked out, like, my wedding location. Yes. I have picked out what oh, I want to oh, wear. Okay. I have an invite list. Ooh. I can go with the details. All I need is just to come and put somebody in there and be pop. That's it. So <laughs> that's not even, you know. So it hasn't affected your work. Nothing has affected me because, again, I'm a stubborn person. Right. I do what I want and yeah. you only have one life. If and you that's have the to thing. Do things, I don't think that it would affect Swanky's life either I really don't because think it actually so. would help him as a stylist. Yeah. Matter of fact, I feel like if you embrace that, there's going to be like a whole new set of people that are going to look up to you and be like, right. hey, this guy inspired me. I want to be You guys be have like to him. look at Amar the lesbian on YouTube. <laughs> she has like opened so many doors. In fact, after yeah. she was the first, after that, there were like a bunch of them, mm-hmm. like uh, lesbians in out. Nigeria that became YouTubers yeah. making content. No, honestly, I think it's one of the... There's nothing as relieving. I used to think that, you know what, when you make money, it gives you freedom. There's nothing as free as being yourself. Woo! That's the word. That's the word, but that's a word for someone that lives in the free world. Let me tell you something. Like, hold on, let me land though. Because we're here in Washington, (laughs) D.C. You can can say things like that. You can do things like that, right? But put yourself in a situation in Lagos where your human rights are not respected in the same degree, Mm -hmm. where you probably don't have your own house that you're living in your own privacy. Mm -hmm. You don't control your environment. Maybe some people, I imagine Swanky probably does control his environment, but like, it's not that easy to have like, you know, it's not that freedom is not the same in or everywhere. It's not. Okay, but let me put it this way. I, I, I mean, I still grew up in Cameroon. Right. So, and I know I've always been myself. That's one right. thing about me. Whether or not I was open about a lot of things back then as I am now, that's a different situation. But I've always been myself. I've always known who I am and I've always embraced that. Right. And so while I was out there, I would say I, I did leave there because I went to boarding schools, high schools, all of that. Yeah. And again, I wasn't as open And you're still a child, right? You're still trying to figure things out. But what I can say is, from being there as a child, I know that I wouldn't change anything. And also, I I always tell all my Nigerian friends, because I'm a Nigerian, but I feel like I'm one just by association. I'm always out there. I love it. I could actually see myself leave in Nigeria. Yeah. And the fact that I can see myself leave there, it means that I would have already looked at the safety aspect, the security yeah. aspect. And again, it probably comes back to what you were saying about money. it could be a money, a financial thing. Oh, it's not could be. It is like a financial thing. Maybe if I was thing. in a hood somewhere. I don't know what the yeah, hood is. Yeah, you can't be is. free like that. And also think about all the hate yeah. that he would get. 
I'll give you an example. I remember people love to hate. No, no, no. This is a different level of hate. I mean, <laughs> exactly. Let me tell you. Let me explain this to you. Right. Yeah. So there was a Marvel movie that came out. I I want to say in September or something. I don't know. It was a while ago. Yeah. And it had like two men kissing. Mm-hmm. Right in the movie, they banned it from Nigeria. They banned it from the Nigeria for from Nigerian cinemas mm-hmm. and a bunch of other like you know countries yeah. that are anti-gay. They ban it, and then I looked on the comment section on on somebody posted it that yeah this is good that they banned this yes they should take their Western you know crap out of our our Child minds please. but the ir- the irony is that this anti homosexuality thing is a Western thing originally but people don't know their history but yeah. anyway so then I saw the comment section and I'm like yes yes the yes they should not you know people just everybody in the comment sections was was supporting it yeah so I think that he just doesn't want to be hated but the thing is <clears throat> but the thing is i think bob risky has shown that there is a space for people like him he has and honestly even a friend of mine her name is densha a lot of people may or may not know her but if you don't know her you better she she's the she's the kind of person one thing i like about her is she's very controversial sometimes too and she knows it and one thing i learned from her is any publicity is good publicity right. so but if people are hating you take that shit and make it work for yourself here's the thing about nigeria though people are more accepting of trans really well i won't call it trans are you talking about I'll call crush it like dressers this. yeah let's call it cross dressers <laughs> because but they're, <I'm> like <laughs> they're they're they don't want to digni- uh, call themselves trans true but They'll call it whatever you want to brand it as cross dressers, but these are comedians. they're trans. There's right. a lot of them out there Tr- too. Right, trans comedians. They're they're more acceptable to that mm-hmm. than to actual gays. And to the point where Bob Brisky for a long time, I don't think I don't know if he's I think I've seen a video where he was like saying my boyfriend, but for a very long time He didn't say that. He said he's against homosexuality, that he's not gay. He, you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, so there's this he idea was doing that it just for money. Literally, there's this idea when you point out people that are clearly gay. Yeah. Like celebrities that are clearly like gay. Like when they Nigeria. come out and say like. No, like if I was gonna point out people that are clearly gay to like a friend. Yeah. This is a friend that is exposed, that has <laughs> gone to school in England. Like that's the thing. Like in like I don't know something about the UK. Yeah. I also went to school in the UK, but I feel like my world view comes from living in America and going around the world too. Mm-hmm. But like even someone that just has gone to the school in the UK, and hasn't like maybe they visit America sometimes, but they're not that exposed. Mm-hmm. They would be surprised when they see um so they, they will say they would say just because somebody is masculine doesn't mean that they're they're lesbian or some just because somebody is is feminine a man is feminine oh he just that goes to his mean, mother that doesn't mean that they, <laughs> and which is true but come on <laughs> i know i know that's why it's, to me it's laughable it's like come on like the fact that like somebody's actually wearing a dress yeah and you're going to tell me that this is a straight man even if they're like being comedians or whatever you can always read like between the lines like you can always spot those who are and those who aren't so because there's a lot of like nigerian um comedians out there right and i'm just thinking like do i want to name it doesn't even matter but the point is right i see what they put out there right right some are actually straight males mm-hmm. putting comedy. There are some who I know, and I don't know why I know this. Maybe it's because I also see like the people they follow and the people they know, and I'm like, mm-hmm. But I right. know that, oh, no. One is doing it for comedy. The other is doing it for comedy, too. But Loki, he's being himself. He's finding his outlet in his right. world to thrive. So, And I don't hold it against anyone. No, you know? for sure. Definitely not. But um, my thing is, I think for me, after living in Los Angeles... yeah. I've lived in Los Angeles a few times, but it was the last time I was there for like three years. Yeah, and I just realized that I, I, anybody can be gay. Like, yeah. there's no such thing as gay art. Like, to be honest, like the most masculine, oh, most no. masculine looking man, yeah, can be the gayest. True, true. You know, can be the gayest of them all. <laughs> yeah, and I've seen it. So I'm now I don't even get like all these people in Hollywood on. T- all these people in Hollywood on TV mm-hmm. in LA. 80% of them yeah. are I are on the spectrum. Or at least the fluid. Yeah, that's what I mean on the spectrum. Oh, okay, like right. Kinsey six scale. I broke this down in another video. Yeah. But Kinsey six scale. You know Kinsey yeah, six scale. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, of course. Well Kinsey six I mean, let me I'll put a clip on <laughs> what the Kinsey six scale is. But yeah, so uh, the fluid. You know, so it's interesting. Like I remember when I I remember when I was like living in LA and I came back to Nigeria. Yeah. Um and I was having a conversation with my friend and she was like, 
oh my god like she's talking about like her in-law or something mm-hmm. her, her 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 husband's uncle her husband's you, uncle yeah right. so she was like can you believe like he has a husband oh my gosh and i was like yeah <laughs> right because like i literally was living in los angeles so i was like okay and she's like well this is nigeria so that's a big deal and i was like oh whatever <laughs> the homophobia is deep i mean that's life i've lived in la i've lived in london to i'm now in dc Matter i've lived of in fact, all these places <laughs> right right <laughs> even in dubai oh let me I tell you oh, i feel like how is that because like <laughs> because it's super super um you know <laughs> I imagine the the religion restricts people. I have such a juicy story, but I just can't share it because of the person involved. Wow. But, but you're going to tell me off camera. Yeah, I'll tell you Sorry. off camera. Sorry. But let me tell you something. All these rules and regulations people be... And that's why I'm like, even in Africa, I'm like, please, people will do what they want to do. Bust down and get your day. eagle on. <laughs> hey, bust down and get your eagle on. Hey. So, for, for, for what is worth, Dubai is almost like a third world country. It's very like... What? In the sense that, you know, they're very um, strict with <laughs> Your the culture religion. culture yeah, wise sorry not terrible like infrastructure or more like <laughs> in terms of views my right bad. that's why i get it i get like i i never caught on to the dubai trend because i like you're not gonna have to you're gonna you're not gonna have me go somewhere and i can't like you can't have a drink it. you know i can't have a drink like right and exactly but I, you like, can I'm not, cool. I'm not cool with that and then the funny thing too is you know it's like they don't want to see pda so it's not like they're saying we don't want to see two guys holding their hands they're like we don't want to see anybody like doing anything funny yeah you know? men or women yeah so then you don't feel left out right 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 (laughs) because it's not just you they're not pointing you out they're not what you say they're not um putting you to the side right like whether you're straight or you're bi whatever you are we don't want to see you doing anything what you want to do but i feel like that's most places though no like we don't really want to see anyone Mm. making out in public whether they're straight or gay i think for us africans it's just more like that's how that's the culture too if if a two if a if a couple were making out in nigeria do you know how people would be like excuse me i'm just get a room really are you kidding what, what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> first, of all, first of all the woman is a harlot she's a slut immediately right. you are a prostitute right. <laughs> oh my god how dare you oh my god my you're naked up. you're kissing this boy can you imagine they'll yeah. say ah, this prostitute is kissing man ah come and see something <laughs> <laughs> So like it's, I don't think that that's any different, you know. True, true. I mean, when I think about it, I see people like do like little pecks here and there, but not any like French kissing. So you're probably right. But um, that's interesting. I mean, I've never thought about this. But but you see, that's the thing. I live in my own bubble, and I feel like as much as I can be in a third world country. I'm still surrounded by people that I lived abroad with or people who lived ab- like people who are, who are cultured and yeah, yeah. exactly they're yeah. accepting of things that maybe they're reg- so I feel like wherever I go I'm always in a bubble and it just makes me think the world is a perfect place and everyone is happy and nobody is you know and again I'm very like I don't want to say tone deaf what's the word I I'm very I don't give a damn what people are thinking. I'm yeah, not you paying know, attention yeah, yeah. to what people are saying. So yeah. whatever is happening is really not my concern unless you're making my business. And I'm like, I mean, oh. I'm the same way, but I do like to get information. Yeah. That's like, that's what I do. So like, I'm always about asking people questions, of course. Just listening to different perspectives. So that's where I get these like bits, these nuggets that I'm like, oh, wow. Like, yeah. You, like, that's crazy. You think that? <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> wow. I'm still thinking of your friend in the UK, shocked. How dare you? Which one? Like, oh, why did I could You know, like, I was... I could not... I was speechless. Hey, right? I had nothing to say. I just, like, looked at her. And I was like, this is the sweetest person. Yeah. I can't believe this is your one thing that... This is how you're acting. Like, if anything, you should be the one, you know, making people a bit more understanding. So, it's the life we live in, man. 2022. Right. Unless this was a while back. This is 2014. Oh, okay. Well, not I guess, that like, people, long ago. Well, I guess, like, things have changed, too. Like the standard that was acceptable in 2014 is different from 2022 true you know that's another thing so yeah. i don't know if she'd have the same ideas now but how definitely, old was she do you well, know because a lot she of must things have come been, with experience and age and you know she must have been 21 because i tell you this i have a lot of african 22? friends from cameroon right who while we were in cameroon 
they were very for lack of a better word i guess i say primitive or like minded they, yeah they were very close-minded there's a lot they didn't do there's a lot they didn't consider but when you come out here you need to get a job you have to be considerate of people's feelings and the people like at a certain point it becomes normal to you mm-hmm. and even if it's not something you like mess with you, but you still respect people because at least you learn that okay i guess she was a student so she wasn't in the workforce so exactly like so, so 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 sometimes people yeah, change yeah, yeah. for sure 100 percent. even me i used to say wild stuff when i was like 18 and i right. think about some of the things i used to say at 18 and i'm like wow like imagine <laughs> imagine if like i was posting videos on youtube right <laughs> they um, would have canceled me ages ago you canceled know? I think all of us were all, you know, yeah. soci- I just think about how society's views change through time. Like uh, Machine Gun Kelly, they just released a video of him mm. on camera where he was swearing at some chick calling her an N word. Do you oh, see yeah, that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did see that. And it's like, well, first of all, I just look at him and I was like, I knew that. I knew he was a racist. <laughs> when I see him, I think that. But the fact that it was, he, this is a red carpet. I, right. I've worked on these red carpets and done these interviews. You had the audacity to shout that in front of a camera. And you know someone's going to be, be like, filming. And, and be like, I'm a wild boy. And that was what was acceptable. That was 2013 or yeah. 2012 or something. It was around that 2013 exactly. period. And I mean, people still use phones. Like, maybe not as much as now, but like, stuff was still I don't there. think ca- castle culture didn't exist. It didn't then. exist, but like, people were definitely recording. Oh, I see right. what you mean. So he probably exi- wasn't so he thinking wasn't like, right, So he wasn't going to get canceled. Right, so he right, wasn't afraid right. of that. But I'm just thinking about... When, well, my point about society's views have changed mm-hmm. what was acceptable to, acceptable to do in 2013 that was like nine years ago that was yeah. 2013 nine years ago is not acceptable today can't do a i lot. mean first of all that was not acceptable then that was disgusting that he even did that i was i'm sh- i was shocked I couldn't right that. but it was like people could get away with it because his brand was like i'm a wild boy remember he had that stupid true, song true, true. i'm a wild boy so that was acceptable yeah i just i don't know he looks like a racist i don't know do you know joanne reavers joanne rivers yeah. the one that died yeah she's a comedian yeah, I've, I've interviewed her before it's like if anybody said half the things she says Ooh, today they would she, be x out. oh done yeah. yeah that's why i think about all these people that used to say all these things yeah. and it's like no we're not gonna accept that because of social media thank god yeah and castle culture and she wasn't racist though but it's like she oh was... i bet you i 100 percent bet you if we pulled some some clips <laughs> you, you would be calling her all sorts of names well i feel like when i say she wasn't racist at least with her, i mean i honestly she wasn't branded she... as a racist because we didn't understand race in the way that we understand it now no we didn't right but she also didn't make like any jokes that allude to anything that you think of i promise you if we take some clips <laughs> if you look at some things i'm a like, fan I don't kill my Dream. <laughs> what, I, what i what i understand is that the standard there's more awareness about yeah. how to spot microaggressions yeah. and racism in different you know areas mm-hmm. so back then we probably we probably weren't equipped to to spot what she was saying is racist but because of social media because of all these commentary yeah. channels because of this global co- consciousness, especially with the COVID and the Black Lives Matter and the more I- understanding of our history, we don't we have a lack of understanding of Black history. Yeah. So there's so many layers to the fact of why we couldn't spot it the way that we can spot it now. Well, I'll say this because as you were speaking, I just thought of something. What? And one of her works, I hate everybody starting with me, and that's the good thing about comedy. She makes fun of herself, right? But she also makes fun of everyone. Like no one is left out. Uh-huh. Like black people, Chinese, like name right. it, they're all included. So that way, maybe that's why I also didn't feel like you know it was geared towards black people. Per Trust se. me, that type of comedy is not <laughs> acceptable anymore. Like I think about there's this woman I can't remember her name. But we used to think Lisa Lampanelli or something. Oh yeah, remember her? Yeah. Like she used to say like I can't. I I date black men because I can't get a white man to. to yeah. To, yeah. She can't get away with that now. That's yeah. why she's not popular anymore. Expi- yeah, yeah. She, <laughs> that, I mean, that, I, I, I don't know the last time anymore. I saw her on TV. That's what I'm saying. Like she's like she's not gonna work in this era that yeah, we're in. That's you know, true. and I like it because there's accountability that goes with it. No, that's good. I, I guess. Okay, so truth be told, my comedy is very dark. Like I like stuff that is very like I don't I don't think it's shocking, but right. like. If, you know, it's wrong, but it's true. So it's right. funny. Like, yeah. you know, like that's my comedy. There's a space. For, don't, don't get it twisted. There's a space. Thank God for the internet. Yeah. There's a space for these nuanced, mm-hmm. you know, controversial people. She can get crazy followers on social media, yeah. but she's not going to be mainstream speaking like that. True. And it, it's also just occurred to me, my thing with racism, right? I grew up in cameroon at least for like maybe the first 17 18 years of my life 
And that is not something I was familiar with. So I feel like sometimes I am, I don't know if the word is oblivious to, oblivious, s- yeah, yeah. to certain situations yeah. because it's not something I'm used to or I'm accustomed to. Mm-hmm. And it might happen. And I'm like, you don't know how to spot it. Yeah. I might so, not think the person is being racist. Yeah. I'm like, they're just being a dickhead, but I'm not right. thinking racism. So you're not alone in that because like even me, like, well, I mean, I left Nigeria when I was five, lived in the UK, lived, went back, went to Togo, yeah, went back to the UK, went to America, back and forth. And I could not spot racism until I came to America. And like, I realized I was a black person in America because everybody was like, you're black, you're white, right? you're white. But here's the thing. Like, it took me, <laughs> it took me seven years of living in America, going through Tufts University with like people, all this like black lives matter, all this uh, social media awareness that mm-hmm. we see online right now. That's what, that was my Tufts experience because yeah. we had all these uh, black students who are very educated about, you know, black history and all that stuff. So, um, it, it took me seven years to realize that white people were actually racist. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know that white people, I didn't, I thought it was like, oh, this is funny. Cause obviously you're not racist when you say these crazy yeah. things, but it took me that long to realize that they're racist as, and why. And it took me like 2020, I made a documentary about the transatlantic slave trade. And I went to Badagri slave port and I've been to Badagri slave port a mm. few times, but I went there three times interviewing people like these guys like their ancestors were the slave merchants yeah interviewing them getting all the details when the white people came and show our forefathers mirror dry gin cannon gun and so on box of matches people started giving out to their slaves a mirror was in essence of 10 human beings during the period of slave trade now the cannon gun outside one of it was in essence of 100 human beings i swear to you that day after that the way that I look at white people, I'm so I'm not racist, but <laughs> let me I take that out. I'll take that out. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I, maybe I will. Video. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Right. But after that day, though, like it, I don't know, it hit different, and I really started understanding the way that our histories are 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 muted. Yeah, that's how we don't. That's why we don't know this stuff. That's why we don't yeah. know how to spot it because we don't even know Black history. Yeah. I only started learning black history after I graduated from school and mm-hmm. started making a documentary on African history. Yeah. I was never taught African history in school, apart from the Egyptians, like for a brief stint yeah. in the UK. So that's part of the problem. It's because we don't know our history, so we don't know how to pinpoint and understand mm-hmm. why this this action, this thing that this person said right now, or this thing that this per- person is doing right now is racist like they say those who don't know their history are doomed to repeat it and that's why i started stream ovg and i was making all these documentaries about african history streamovg.com go check it out get go to our uh, 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 go to our africa collection yeah yeah man i mean this especially this topic is something we can go on and on and on seriously but i'm just obviously again and that's why i was asking how old your friend was because i think with time you just learn to understand your environment yeah and even like the people I mentioned who came from back home, like I've seen a lot of them who I'm the kind of person I know how to hold a grudge. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I do. Like I see people from high school. I'm like, you were never nice to me. Why are you smiling with me now? I don't know you. But you know, the thing is they've changed right. and I wasn't there to like realize or see that process. Right. And so I don't even give them the space. Maybe mm-hmm. until I stand from far and I'm like, oh, wow, this person actually has changed. Yeah, and people then, change. Yeah. So it made me realize like, hey, you know what? People change. They just need time to adapt to their societies. And, and people get educated. Exactly. You know, people, people. Uh, you know that, that that that's that's really it ignorance like yeah. when you see stuff like racism homophobia it's all ignorance it really is you know that's really just what it is and that's why i always say i think you should just be yourself be you and people will either like you or i mean not you. everyone can like you but those who would love you will love you for who you are exactly and you know you'll flourish and w- again which brings us back to you know swanky i was like i felt like he wasn't giving the most of who he was I don't even know this guy personally, but yeah. just from watching the little bits I did, I was like, this guy has a lot more to offer oh, and yeah. I'm not seeing it, you know. Mm, yeah, because, because of the, even the walk, yes. the clothes. You cannot come with that 
have no swagger, passion do you understand? and tell me that you're the quiet mouse nah. that we're seeing. I'm like, nah, 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 nah. This guy, this guy, he's not showing and me. And I hear that he he's so funny <laughs> that he cracks people up. Right. I'm like, yo, where is the personality on this show? Give it to us. We want passion, it. Fashion, funny. Next season, no excuses, looking. Swanky. Yeah, we're waiting. We want to see. Who knows? Maybe the real Bob will you. bring it out of him. <laughs> <laughs> bring Bob Risky. Bring, bring Bob Risky on that show. We need, yeah, we need Bobby. We, we need Bob. Who else do you we think should Bobby. be on there? Well, you did say we have to. We should have. Uh, James and Bobby, yeah, and they should fight. They should fight it out. They should fight. Do you know how many views we will get? Oh uh, my god, we will log in. Oh my god, <laughs> get Bobby and James, let them fight. Fight it out. I, I'd, be, I'd definitely be down to watch them. Oh my, oh, that would be too good. I wonder who else we can throw into the mix Oof. just to like spice things up. I can see famous? Kenny also trying. Wait, who is famous? No, no, you said famous, uh, yeah, someone yeah. like African that's famous. Yeah, so, um, um, what's her name? Tonto DK is really funny. You know her? Oh, yeah. She's hilarious. She's cool. And she's also fighting with Bob Risky. They need their own yeah. reality show where Tonto DK, Bob Risky, James, all of them should come and fight. <laughs> <laughs> and then one or two comedians just so that we can just be right, laughing just the whole <laughs> entire time. <laughs> two people are seriously fighting. Right. is funny. Comedians are there making jokes. is also funny. People so, okay. need to know how to do casting, right? Yeah. Like, yo, like, guys. casting makes the whole casting, situation. Casting, like, especially with reality TV shows, mm, you yeah. know? Yeah. So definitely, Bob will be waiting. Bobby, where's your show, man? Bob oh, oh, hit me up. Let's let's go to Netflix, Bobby. Let's let's pitch something to or Netflix. He, or he can come here and entertain us. Right. <laughs> Bob Risky. You don't seem too confused. You're like, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, definitely Bob. Um Yeah. So I guess we were talking about this show and we talked about all sorts of things. Race, life. Race, sexuality. All of that. You know. Fluidity. All of that. Anyway, guys, thank you guys for watching. Thank you. Do you have anything else that you wanted to say? No. Um, you know, I'm just out here living my best life. Hey. And I hope that everybody does the same. Live your best life. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, all the above. My name is Kenim. And? Chris Boban. Chris Boban. And see you next time. <laughs>